What up, YouTube? Team Movies here. Now, yesterday I, I of course, made a list of uh, talk about my top 10 favorite January movies of of uh, the 2010. So today I'm going to do my a list of talk about my 10 favorite uh, January movies of the 2000s. Because it's been a pretty, like, yeah, January is usually the dumping ground for movies, yeah. But there have been some pretty uh, decent January movies, in my opinion, obviously, because obviously most uh, films on this list, a lot of people disagree with. But there are some January movies uh, that got released in the 2000s that I quite saw of enjoy. Yeah, there are some also that was not so good in my opinion, but... Anyway, with that being said, here's my 10 favorite January movies of the 2000s. Alright, coming in at number 10, I'm going to go with You Got Served. Now, this is a pretty good uh, dancey based movie, and it stars uh, Omarion uh, Granberry and uh, Marcus Houston, uh, who plays... Uh, who plays these, like, you know, young kids named, uh, David and, uh, Elgin, who helm a, a talented, uh, street dancing crew that, uh, engages in a dance battle in a, uh, Los Angeles, uh, warehouse club belonging to this uh, owner named, uh, Mr. Rad, played by Steve Harvey. And, of course, you got, uh, Orange uh, County's, uh, rich kid, uh, Wade, who, played by Christopher Jones, who ends up challenging, uh, who ends up uh, challenging David and Elgin to compete against, uh, his dances for, uh, 5,000, um, I don't know, and this, I guess you could say, was like a modern uh, West Side Story. You've Got Served is a, probably one of the most uh, coolest dance movies there is. I mean, it's pretty, uh, like, I really probably like the characters of Bob. Uh, Marcus Hughes and uh, Omari and Granberry, they don't really do much anymore, but they were both really great at this. Uh, Steve Harvey as the uh, club owner was pretty decent. Uh, you also had uh, Jeffrey Freeman from My Wife and Kids fame was in this. Yeah, You've Got Served was a pretty decent film, and... Pretty cool line. I mean, uh, you got served. I mean, come on. But anyway, if you guys haven't really seen the first you got served, because they did do a sequel, which you know. But uh, anyway, yeah, the first uh, you got served is a really good one. All right. Coming in at number nine, I'm gonna go with Smoking Aces. All right. Now, yesterday I talked about my ten favorite uh, you know, January movies of the 2010s, and The Gray was on that list. And The Grey was directed by this director named Joe Carnahan, who also gave us Smoke and Aces, which is awesome. You know, it's where this uh, Las Vegas and would-be uh, crime boss, uh, Buddy Aces uh, Israel, agrees to uh, testify against a, a former uh, a former partner and a friend named uh, Primos Ferreira's uh, in return to uh, admittance into a uh, witness of protection. And so, like, you know, the deal ends up, uh, you know, being hammered out. And so, like, uh... And so, uh, Spareza ends up ordering a hit on, uh, Israel and a host of, uh, hitmen and women are raised to kill, uh, the snitch and, uh, kill the bounty. And it's pretty interesting. I mean, got lots of interesting, uh, the Spookbook characters in this. A uh, great cast. You know, you got Ryan Reynolds, Ben Affleck, uh, Jason Bateman, uh, Common, Ray Leo, Jeremy, uh, Piven, uh, Taraj P. Henson, uh, Andy Garcia, Chris, uh, Chris Pine, Matthew, uh, Fox, you had, uh, Joe Egerton in this, Wayne Newton was even in this for some reason, yeah, yeah, it took place in Las Vegas, I mean, come on, but, uh, anyway, yeah, Spoken Aces, it's, it's a pretty violent, uh, film, it's entertaining to watch, and he also did a sequel, which kind of stunk, but Spoken Aces is such a fun flick, if you guys haven't really seen it, it's probably, to me, it's, uh, Joe Carnahan's best work, in my opinion. Alright, coming in at number 8, I'm going to go with Save the Last Dance, another dancing uh, base film. And it stars uh, Jill Estes, who plays this, uh, who plays this young girl named uh, Sarah, who uh, moved from a uh, small Midwestern town to uh, the south side of Chicago when her uh, mother ends up dying. And so she ends up falling for this uh, teen named, uh, played by uh, Sean Patrick uh, Thomas at her uh, new high school, and you know, he ends up, uh, they, they end up having a relationship, and he ends up, uh, teaching her, uh, you know, uh, dance moves and all. Uh, you, it was directed by Thomas, uh, Carter. Uh, you also had, uh, Carrie Washington was in this. Save the Last Dance had some really great, uh, dancing, uh, sequence. You know, uh, Sean Patrick Thomas and Angela Stiles both had really nice chemistry with one another. I mean, I'm... It's a pretty decent film. So if you guys haven't seen Save the Last Dance yet, really cool uh, choreography. Pretty decent flick. I mean, it has nice, uh, you know, hip-hop uh, stuff, and yeah, pretty good uh, flick. Alright. Uh, coming in at number 7, I'm going to go with Natty McPhee. 
Now, it stars a con firm who uh, plays this uh, widow named uh, Cedric Brown, who hires this uh, nanny named uh, Nanny McPhee to take care of uh, his kids. And Nanny McPhee has, like, a crazy powers. I, I guess if you want to look at it, it's kind of like a weird version of uh, Mary Poppins. Like, she's like a weird, weird version of Mary Poppins. And you had uh, Emma Thompson was in this con firm. A uh, really cool uh, family uh, entertainment flick. Uh, obviously, you could tell, like, it is based on a book, but you could tell that they were trying to uh, channel uh, Mary Poppins at times. But, uh, yeah, Nanny McPhee, you know, probably one of uh, Emma Thompson's uh, coolest uh, work. I mean, the, uh, you know, the, like, makeup they used on uh, Emma Thompson was pretty decent. Uh, the one who plays the uh, kids, who, by the way, one of the kids, uh, you know, was from, uh, was from Game of Thrones, so that's that. Really decent uh, flick. Uh, you also had Angela Lansbury was in this. I mean, really decent. I mean, I kind of they released this in January, to be honest, because this looks like it should have been released like around the summer uh, holiday season, but uh, anyway. Alright, coming in at number six, I'm going to go with Notorious. Now, Notorious is a biopic about... Uh, about a uh, fame rapper, uh, Biggie Small, who also went by the name, who of course uh, was uh, Christopher uh, Wallace at first, and this, this of course uh, was a, you know, story uh, that told. It was pretty much uh, told uh, his story from uh, you know, um, being born and raised in uh, Brooklyn, New York City, uh, to becoming uh, you know one of the most famous iconic rappers of all time. Uh, you had uh, Anthony Mackie uh, played the role of Tupac in this. Angela Bassett played his mom. Uh, you had uh, Derek Luke playing the role of uh, of Sean Combs. I mean, this is an awesome flick. Uh, I mean, you even had Notori Naughton uh, playing the role of Lil' Kim. Really cool casting there. I mean, even if you're not a fan of Biggie Small, I think you'll still probably get kicked out of this. I mean, Notori's had some really uh, cool uh, you know, rap scenes. Uh, Jamal playing the role of uh, Biggie Small was perfect casting right there. You even had uh, Biggie Small's, like, uh, actual son playing uh, the role, like, the uh, younger version. Really awesome film. I mean, if you guys haven't really seen a Notorious, definitely go check it out. Alright, coming in at number five. This is probably one film lots of people probably disagree with, and that's cool. M number five, I'm going to go with Are We There Yet? You know, the family of Road Trip Comedy starring uh, Ice Cube, who ends up uh, taking... Who, Ends up, uh, you know, um, falling for this uh, divorce uh, named Suzanne, played by uh, Neil Long. But he ends up, off, uh, of course, uh, Nick, you know, played by Q, offers to accompany her uh, children, uh, Lizzie and Kevin, on a uh, flight from a Portland, uh, Oregon to uh, Canada. But, you know, uh, things end up going horribly wrong, and so now he has to uh, drive them uh, instead. And, you know, All We There Yet is a really fun family uh, adventure flick. Ice Cube, like, who knew that he could do uh, family-based uh, movies perfectly? I mean, this is the guy who uh, does songs like uh, The Police. Going from that to, I mean, to a family film like Are We There Yet? It was pretty interesting to watch. I mean, if you guys haven't really seen Are We There Yet, definitely give it that watch. Alright, right, number four, I'm going to go with Taken. Now, Take of course, stars uh, Liam Neeson, uh, who plays uh, Brian Mills, who is this uh, government operative uh, who uh, who ends up, uh, you know, finding out that his door ends up being taken, so uh, he ends up uh, having to, uh, uh, so he actually ends up uh, trying to find, uh, find the uh, people, you know, responsible for taking her and all. I mean, this movie was really the film that really put, I mean, Liam Neeson has been around for a while, you know, shouldn't listen to him. But this is really the movie that really put him on the uh, action map for most people. And Taken, I mean, crazy, it got released in... It actually got released in January 2008, I believe, if I'm not second. You know, Taken is a pretty uh, fun, enjoyable uh, entertainment uh, flick. A great action. Pretty violent for a PG-13 movie, to be honest, yeah. Uh, of course, you had Maggie Grace as, uh, the, as the daughter of Fama Jansen was in this. Really awesome flick. And, of course, we uh, end up having other Taken movies since then, so... Alright, coming in at number three, I'm going to go with my Blade Valentine. Now, obviously, the remake. Now, my Blade Valentine is about this, uh... About this, um, coal miner named uh, Tom Herringer, who caused a uh, accidental death of a uh, five man and, uh, put, uh... And he ended up uh, putting this, uh, you know, kill... This, uh... 
pickaxe killer named uh, Henry uh, Warren, but uh, on Valentine's Day a uh, year later, uh, Henry Warren ends up uh, you know killing other folks on uh, Valentine's Day. And yeah, my play Valentine is it actually got released in a uh, 3D back in 2009, and it is it lives up to the name. It is bloody gory. I mean, this thing features a human heart. I mean. <laughs> Henry Warren, of course, kills, like, loads of crazy folks. I mean, not to mention, you also had, uh, uh one of the Winchester brothers, uh, from Supernatural was also in this. I mean, my Blade Valentine was pretty cool to watch. I mean, I actually still own it on DVD, and in the, uh, DVD, there's actually 3D glasses, which, watching this in 3D is pretty awesome. Alright, coming in at number two, I'm gonna go with Alpha Dark. Now, Alpha Dog stars, uh, stars people like, uh, Emil Hirsch, and it's about this, uh, dealing, uh, delinquent named, uh, Johnny Trulove, who, uh, lives in the, uh, high life of L.A. He parties with his peers, getting, uh, studying on dope and all, but, you know, they end up, uh, they end up, uh, kidnapping this, uh, junkie's, uh, younger brother, uh, and, uh, and these are not really what you call great folks, but it stars a really great cast, like, you had, uh, the aforementioned, uh, Hirsch, uh, the late Anton uh, Yelcha was in this. Uh, ben Foster, Justin Timberlake, Amanda Seyfried, uh, Bruce Willis with hair. Uh, Sharon Stone was in this. <coughs> I mean, yeah, Alpha Dog is a really insane film. Crazy to believe that's based on a true story, but crazy to believe that it actually is. I mean, yeah, if you guys haven't really seen Alpha Dog, definitely go check it out. Right, my number one favorite January movie of the year 2000s goes to Grandma's Boy. Now, it's where this uh, this video cr game creator named uh, Alex, played by uh, Alan uh, Cover, who ends, who's, ends up being uh, evicted from his uh, house, and so he thinks of the uh, drastic matchup by actually living with his grandma and her uh, friends. And the grandma is, of course, played by the late, great uh, Doris Roberts. You know, ever, like, I'm not, like, like, Whenever I think of Doris Roberts, I actually don't even think of her by Liz Raymond now. I literally think of her as the grandma in Grandma's War. And... And I should mention, uh, Grandma's War is a, uh... It's produced by Adam Sandler's company. It has lots of Adam Sandler's friends in this. Uh, of course, the cover, you guys might know from, uh, Lil Nicky. Uh, he played the homeless guy in, uh, both Jack and Jill and, uh, Happy Gilmore. I mean, our cover is awesome in this. And Doris Roberts was pretty great. Uh, Pierre Dante as uh, Dante was pretty decent. Uh, you also had other folks like Nick Swanson, Jonah Hill, uh, Linda Cardellini was in this. Uh, you also had uh, you know David Spade, Rob Schneider. I mean, anyway, uh, yeah, Grandma's Boy is probably one of the uh, coolest uh, stoner-based comedies there is. It's funny, raunchy. I mean, if you ever want to hear the mother from uh, Everybody Loves Raymond, you know, uh, you know, get high, or, uh, curse a little, or you play a video game, this is one for you. And not to mention, uh, Avatar dude, Joe David Amor, he was great in this as well. I mean, who doesn't love Grandma's Boy? It's probably one of the funniest comics of the year, 2000s. It's hilarious. If you guys haven't really seen Grandma's Boy, go check it out. I mean, it got released early, uh, January, early January 2006, and I still own it on DVD. It's such a funny play. To me, it's one of the best January movies that ever got released in the year 2000s. But anyway, that's uh, pretty much it. Let me do the quick run now. Alright, uh, 10, uh, You Got Served. 9, Smoking Aces. 8, Save the Last Dance. 7, Nanny McFate. Uh, 6, uh, Notorious. 5, Are We There Yet? 4, Taken. 3, My Blade Valentine. Uh, 2, Alpha Dog. And number 1 is Grandma's Boy. Now, there's other uh, January movies that got released in the 2000s. Uh, My Baby's Daddy was a pretty good one. Uh, Next Friday, another Ice Cube film. Uh, let's see what else. I remember Hotel for Dogs, that guy, January release. Oh, uh, boy. There's lots of January movies that I can't even remember off the top of my head. But uh, anyway, let me leave you guys. What? I gotta hurry this up because my computer's about to die.
Uh, what are some of your favorite January movies of the 2000s? Drop comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell for more notifications. This here is Team Movie Sign Off.